Hi, this is Sanjay Gangal from GIS Cafe. I'm here with Peter Bond, CEO of Orbit GT. Uh, hello, Peter. Hello, Sanjay. It's good to be back. Uh, yes, uh, we did talk uh, uh, last month, uh, uh, but for our uh, uh, viewers who have not seen the last month's interview, can you uh, uh, briefly tell us uh, what your new products are about? Yeah, so um, we recently launched um, um, a new portfolio for uh, 3D mapping where we brought all the uh, uh, previous products together for mobile mapping, for aerial mapping, for oblique mapping, indoor, outdoor, etc. Brought it all together one portfolio and added some great uh, new features and automated extraction. And we also launched a major upgrade of our cloud-based platform, 3dmapping.cloud, um, and introduced some new business models. Yeah, so the, that it's much easier for people to come on board and, and use all the advantages that that cloud platform can, can offer them. Yeah. Uh, 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 so essentially, uh, you're letting people uh, 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 which have any form of data uh, to be able to integrate that into your cloud. Yes, exactly. Uh, what we focus on is to be totally vendor neutral and um, have the possibility to blend that in into any workflow that you're using. So vendor neutral means also system neutral, so any type of uh, reality capture, be it uh, vehicle based or drone based or aerial or indoor out mm -hmm. or backpack, etc. Uh, we can blend it all and fuse it all together. Um, and even bring it, bring it uh, from, from different uh, sources or data centers. Uh, so we recently opened uh, a couple of new uh, data centers so that we cover the globe in, in, uh, in a performant way that uh, wherever you are located you can have uh, some data center nearby uh, that can give you maximum performance. So all that uh, can nicely blend together in our uh, SaaS platform 3 mapping.cloud. And uh, are the data centers located around the world in different uh, uh, continents? Yes, exactly. There's one in the US, one in Europe, and one in uh, Southeast Asia. Okay. So, uh, so essentially, you got uh, less latency uh, in data capture. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, there's uh, less latency for the users, and um, uh, of course, we, we can duplicate more. Uh, uh, but this is at this moment, this is uh, this is good enough uh, for for the customers that that we need to serve today. Um, but our backend is open enough to install in other data centers or even in private data centers or in government-only data centers that uh, a customer might need. So we're very flexible on that end as well. Okay. And you also released an SDK API for your 3D mapping cloud. Uh, tell us about that. Yes. Um, well, we think it's very important not only to be very neutral on uh, supporting the different types of data, um, but in the end, you want to use that data in your workflow. Hmm. So the SDK is a key component in our strategy, in our vision. And uh, here at the Azure Show, of course, we show the SDK integrated in the Azure platform. Um, so we're demonstrating here the uh, plugin that we made for Arc Online, and also the one for ArcGIS Pro. Uh, ArcGIS Map is following up, and then REST is open for other parties to use that SDK, which is free to use and free to do, to do development with, um, to blend the data or the viewer into a workflow that is valuable for the end customer. Um, and that opens, straight away opens all the access to anything mobile mapping, anything street view, anything aerial, anything oblique, from any vendor of that data. So you don't have a vendor lock-in if you're using our technology. Um, and that's a contradiction with, with uh, all the other people I see mm -hmm. here that kind of offer black boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, like I told you last time, I think that's obsolete. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, so it, it gives a lot of opportunities for people using our SDK and, and sharing that data in, in, in that way. Uh, so I'm guessing uh, people have used your SDK or you have used the SDK to integrate uh, Trimble, uh, Regal, and uh, uh, as well as Geomni. Uh. Yeah, there are some, some examples that um, the partners that, that you mentioned uh, uh, gave us some data that we can show that their data is also supported within the ESRI platform. And why do we do that? Well, because it's really, really big data, and that's our speciality. Uh, that's the domain that um, ESRI hasn't entered. Um, so you need another tool to bring that big data in, and um, that's why we um, work together with, with Regal, with, with Trimble, uh, with Germany for, for oblique imagery, uh, and with a couple of other companies, of course, as well, um, to bring their data on board and then showcase that, hey, we've done a whole city in mobile mapping, uh, this is a couple of terabytes of, of uh, aerial, uh, no, not aerial, street level uh, LiDAR and, and, and imagery. Um, and we can disclose that in one click. Hmm. And um, that's a whole different game, you know, and 
this is, we are here to show that not only the technology, but also the data that can be used and really proving that what we're saying as a software provider also works for the people who are producing the data and the people who are consuming the data. Yeah, so uh, most of the people who will be using a SDK uh, uh, toolkit and stuff, they are the other vendors of which create uh, 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 the data or the end consumers like the uh, local city, state government people? Well, that's completely open. Um, we have uh, partners that are data vendors or, or hardware vendors that are interested in using our SDK and plug it in, in their platform that mm -hmm. to provide to their customers. Uh, but I think the majority of um, integrations of the SDK will be at the customer side, at the end user side, mm. where they want to have access to that data um, within their workflow. Workflows that not necessarily have to be a GIS related workflow, mm -hmm. for example, asset management or um, tax assessments. Uh, you don't really need a GIS mm -hmm. portion there, it's probably a very administrative uh, look and feel to it, mm -hmm. but if you can plug in our data or street level imagery, for example, you can see, okay, the billboards uh, of that size means it's those taxes, etc. cetera. Um, and that can be brought in, in, in basically in any, in any workflow, and that's, that's a great advantage um, that, that you have that flexibility. And uh, what is the feedback you're receiving here uh, at your booth? Well, um, um, it's amazing. Yeah, we've been uh, extremely busy yesterday, and mm -hmm. you even had to call me mm -hmm. off my booth to get here on time. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're we're doing very good, and I'm very happy that that uh, we can have this as a, as a platform here in the, at the Azure EZC, uh to really get in touch with the end users, mm -hmm. and rather than just presenting a technology. Uh, now also presenting the end user solution with the content that they like to see. So that's, uh, that's a really good uh, step forward again. Yeah. I would uh, always like to close with uh, how can people find out more about Orbit GT on the internet? That's uh, orbitgt.com and uh, if you want to know more about our cloud-based SaaS product, uh, that's called 3dmapping.cloud. So that's where you have to go. All right. Thank you very much, Peter, for coming over to talk to us. Have a great show. Thank you, Sanjay. See you next time. Uh, thank you, this is Sanjay Gangal from GIS Cafe.